The indictment of former President Donald Trump has yet again become the most discussed political story in Washington and across the United States. The former president will appear in court tomorrow over this January 6th probe indictment. Joining me now to discuss what this means is Stefan Mihailu. He is a senior advisor to Vivek Ramaswamy and his presidential campaign. And Brian Karam is back with us, White House columnist. Thanks so much to the both of you for joining me. Thank you. Glad to be here. Um, so, Stefan, perhaps let's just start out. Oftentimes, when an indictment like this takes place, you have obviously the other candidates in the race who are, you know, jumping to conclusions about what this means. Uh, Ron DeSantis, for example, he put out a tweet and said that he hadn't even read the indictment yet and that he was criticizing the indictment. Um, I know your candidate, Vivek Ramaswamy, he put out um, a video. Um, and, and I believe that was also before this 45 page indictment was unsealed. So how is it that people can have such concrete opinions, so to speak, before reading through the indictment? And, and what is the campaign's overall perspective on this now third indictment of the former president? Now, Brian and I are former journalists and a current journalist who held government uh, politicians accountable. Vivek Ramaswamy, by you know, profession is an attorney. I went to Yale Law School, so he knows the Constitution backwards and forwards. Vivek Ramaswamy had said he does not want to win the race for the White House this way, where the Department of Justice or FBI basically takes out through the courts his main political rival. You know, Vivek says all the time that it benefits him in the race for the White House to have Donald Trump out of the race, but he does not want to win that way. And Vivek Ramaswamy believes this is a weaponization of the Justice Department and the Biden uh, legal team to basically destroy Donald Trump and that he does not want to win the presidency that way. He wants to win in a Ronald Reagan landslide, but not by having his chief political opponent taken out by the courts. Um, Brian, per perhaps, I mean, whether or not you agree with what Stefan said, perhaps touch on that, but also looking at the um, some, of, some of the other people, the, the co-conspirators in this indictment, of course, people like Rudy Giuliani and, and Sidney Powell, there was many others as well. Um, what do you make of how close some of these people are to the former president and, and how they were advising him to ultimately come to some of the decisions he made, which ultimately resulted in this indictment? Uh, well, let's clean up a couple of things. First of all, we don't know who the, they weren't named. Now, we know who these unnamed, unindicted co-conspirators are for the most part, but they weren't named. And there's a good reason for that. As far as uh, as the weaponization, look, this was a, a grand jury uh, of normal people who heard evidence and then chose to indict. Um, let this process work, chips fall where they may. And if he's if he's found not guilty, and I, I, I would I would not want my opponent be taken out by the courts either, unless it was warranted. And so the the Department of Justice and Jack Smith is saying in this case it is warranted. So let the let it play out. I uh, because you know if he's found not guilty, he's found not guilty. Um, it will only strengthen his case if he isn't. As far as how close they were to the uh, former president, well, every every so far. Every indictment by the federal government has merely involved people who worked with the president, Republicans who worked for him, or the staffers at Mar-a-Lago who worked with him. Um, it's hard to see this objectively as, and I understand the the political uh, look that it that it has, but in when you look at just the facts, evaluating just the facts, it's hard to believe that it and it and it does it's not sustained by the facts that this was a weaponization of the DOJ in this case while politically it certainly can look that way objectively it if you look just look at the facts it's hard to find that conclusion to be accurate but at the end of the day one of Ron DeSantis favorite little terms at the end of the day it's going to be um what happens in the court of law now that these are filed there are 70 Donald Trump is looking at 78 different charges. Vegas odds are even money that by the end of the summer, he'll be staring at an even 100. Um, these are a lot of bullets coming at the guy, political bullets, uh, if you wish, or judicial bullets, if you must. But nonetheless, this is something that's going to take up a great deal of his time. Uh, I think Vivek is probably going to be uh, in the race longer than Donald Trump, uh, whether he gets there because <laughs> Donald Trump is in prison or because Donald Trump just loses I doubt that Donald Trump's going to be around by the time July rolls around next year and there's a Republican National Convention. And while you may, I, I understand the political need to, to 
to court the supporters of Donald Trump, it just doesn't it doesn't jive with reality to say that at the end of the day, this was a weaponization of the DOJ. Um, these people were all Republicans that testified. It was a Republican uh, that was appointed by Trump in the FBI who started this. So that's that's my look from here outside looking in. And, and Stefan, so let's perhaps pick up on Brian's point. Um, when, when we talk about political strategy, for an example, um, obviously Vivek Ramaswamy, he gave a, a press conference talking about um, the weaponization of the DOJ, as as Brian was talking about there. Um, he is talking about potentially suing some people for not receiving a timely response to one of his inquiries. Um, and, and many people are pointing out that that he needs in order to win. I mean, there was a Kaplan poll that showed him at 12 percent, which is on par with Ron DeSantis, but still nowhere close to uh, the numbers that the former president has. So um, is that the strategy of the campaign at this point? Try to take Trump voters over to the Ramaswamy campaign? Well, there's a reason why Vivek Ramaswamy is surging to second in all the polls. He is not running a campaign of vengeance and grievance and anger. He's going to take down all Trump's America first agenda and actually get results for the American people. Vivek is consistently consistent. And he talked about the fact that back in 2016, there was talk of building the wall. Well, Vivek Ramaswamy as president wants to unite our country and actually not only finish the wall, but use the military to secure the border and to bomb cartels. So there's a big difference because Vivek Ramaswamy always says he's not running against Donald Trump. He's not running against anyone in the Republican primary. Vivek Ramaswamy says he's running for the American people. And his agenda is crystal clear. He wants to unite our country. And in the same way that Gerald Ford offered a pardon of Richard Nixon, Vivek Ramaswamy was the first presidential candidate on the GOP side, of course, uh, to say that he would pardon Donald Trump to unite our country and move on into talking about results, not just talking about vengeance, not talking about anger or grievance, but getting results done for the American people. So Vivek Ramaswamy is crystal clear. He's been very consistent on his positions. He's not running against Donald Trump. He's not running against Ron DeSantis. He's laying out his America first agenda, and it's really resonating with people to the fact that he's now surging in second in polls. Uh, and he's in a very good position, considering the fact that I was there for the launch of the campaign in February in New Hampshire. He was at 0.0 percent. And now he's in double digits because of the fact that he's talking about issues. He's talking about what he's going to do for the American people, not just run a campaign on vengeance and anger and grievance. And, and Brian, some of the first points in the indictment literally just state bluntly that uh, Donald Trump lost the uh, 2020 election campaign. Um, and the reaction from the Trump campaign has you know, been that Donald Trump has the right to you know, say whatever he wants. But also in the indictment, it, it emphasizes that as well. Donald Trump has a right to say whatever he wants, even if that is is false. Um, but I guess I'm just wondering from your perspective, at what point in time does the 2024 election cycle become a question other than Donald Trump? You had mentioned that uh, perhaps Vivek Ramaswamy <laughs> could surge in the polls because Donald Trump could could move down given some of the challenges that he's now facing. Well, it'd be nice if we stopped talking about Donald Trump any day now. I've been talking about him for six years and I'm bored with it. But look, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is we're going to be talking about this guy for probably the next 200 years. Um, Donald Trump will be in court facing accusations, look, 78 charges. We're not he's not going away anytime soon. Um, but to uh, Ramaswamy, he is running against Donald Trump. I mean, I, I understand he's putting ideas forward and and that he searched in the polls because there are people who agree with his ideals and his ideas. But at the end of the day, the guy sitting at the top of the heap is still Donald Trump. And he's going to be sitting there for a while, apparently. Uh, even, I mean, God forbid, you know, he could be under this scenario. He could be indicted, tried, and convicted next year, be in prison, still get the nomination. If he wins, he could be, he could, he could, the 2021 inaugural could take place in prison in Fort Leavenworth with him in orange togs, him coming out, getting in a suit, flying back to Washington, D.C., and starting his, you know, reign of terror. That's, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think he's going to be on the ticket. Uh, right now, there are a lot of people uh, that are <laughs> are pulling underneath the margin of error. But I think all of that is because Donald Trump 
takes up all the oxygen in the room for the Republican Party and has since he stepped on stage. He gets the money, he gets the support, and there are people who have shown fealty to him, uh, whether they agree with him or not. And until he's gone, he's going to continue to suck up all the oxygen in the room. I would love to see others take center stage other than Donald Trump. I'd love to be able to talk about the ideas that you just talked about here, as far as Vivek goes. I, I, I may disagree with him. I may agree with him. But the bottom line, I would much rather talk about those ideas than the fact that Donald Trump is a criminal. All right. We'll leave it there. Stefan Mihailu, advisor to Vivek Ramaswamy and Brian Karam. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure. <laughs>